Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new mystery with Molly. If you are new around here, if you've never seen my face before, then hi, my name is Molly. And I post true crime videos like this every single week, so if you think that's something that you might want to stick around for, then please do subscribe. And make sure that you switch on the little notification bell so that YouTube will notify you every single time that I post. I hope you are all okay and having a good start to 2021. This is the first video that I'm filming this year. My video last week, The Case of Caroline Glacken, was actually filmed before Christmas. So I haven't said Happy New Year yet to you guys. I'm really, really hoping that 2021 is a hell of a lot better than 2020 was. Anyway, today we are going to be discussing a Jane Doe case and I haven't done a Doe case in a couple of months, I think. Today's Jane Doe is known as the Little Miss Lake Panasofsky Jane Doe and next month is actually the 50th anniversary of this Doe's body being discovered, which is why I wanted to cover it and share her story with you this week. So for today's case, we are travelling to the area of Lake Panasofsky, which is in Sumter County in Florida in the US. On Friday the 19th of February 1971, two hitchhikers were walking along Interstate 75 and they were heading north from the city of Tampa. During their hike, they came across Lake Panasofsky and whilst they were walking across the bridge over the highway overpass they noticed something in the shallow water below. They spotted what they believed to be a human figure in the water and so immediately they notified a state policeman that was passing through the area and within an hour a team of investigators were at the crime scene. The body in the water was soon recovered and it was quickly determined to be that of a young woman although her body was pretty badly decomposed when it was discovered. It's believed that she had probably been dead in that water for around three to four weeks. The woman had no form of identification on her person and due to how decomposed her remains were, they were unable to take her fingerprints, meaning they were unable to determine who this woman was. And so she quickly became known as the Little Miss Lake Panasofsky. However, what was obvious was that she was the victim of a homicide and investigators believed that she had been murdered elsewhere and then her body had been dumped in the water where it was found weeks later. Her cause of death was strangulation and she had been strangled to death with a size 36 men's belt that was still wrapped around her neck when she was discovered. And according to one source, one of her ribs was also fractured at the time of her death, so they theorised that during her murder, her killer probably knelt on her chest as he was strangling her with the belt, and that caused the fracture in her rib. From what I can gather, there was no evidence that suggested she had been sexually assaulted and when she was found she was fully clothed. So I'll put pictures of what she was wearing on screen but she was wearing green plaid bottoms, a green shirt and a white and green floral patterned shawl. Jane Doe also had a lot of jewellery on her. She had a gold and white watch on her left wrist as well as a gold chain necklace and additionally she was wearing a gold ring with a clear stone and I believe this ring was on her wrist ring finger which suggested to the detectives that perhaps this woman was either married or engaged at the time of her murder. The fact that she had all of this jewellery on her also indicated that the motive for this crime was not robbery because if it was, you would have thought that whoever had done this would have taken these jewellery pieces from her. Authorities initially believed that this Jane Doe victim was a Caucasian woman, most likely between the ages of 17 and 24 years old. She weighed approximately 115 pounds and was quite short. She was somewhere between 5 foot and 5 foot 5 in height. Her hair was a dark brown colour and they believed that she also had brown 
brown eyes and from looking at her teeth they could tell that this woman had received quite a lot of dental work in her life. She had had several fillings as well as a couple of crowns and dental caps. However when her teeth were compared against a national database of dental records they could not find a match. Despite knowing all of this about Little Miss Lake Panasofsky, investigators were no closer to finding out her identity or identifying who killed her and it seems as though they received very little tips and leads from members of the public. And so sadly, six months after she was found, her body was laid to rest at Oak Grove Cemetery in the city of Wildwood in Florida and above her grave was a small metal marker that just read Jane Doe 1971. Over the next couple of years, years this case pretty much just went completely cold however 15 years after her murder in 1986 her case was reopened by Sheriff Jamie Adams of the Sumter County Police and in February Jane Doe's body was exhumed. Sheriff Adams was hopeful that by using x-rays and the dimensions of this woman's skull a medical illustrator would be able to make composite sketches of the woman's face and show what she may have looked like when she was alive. Many, many composite sketches and reconstructions of Little Miss Lake Panasofsky have been created over the years, which I will have been showing on screen throughout this video. Age regression drawings were also created, so they made sketches of what Jane Doe may have looked like when she was younger. So they drew up a sketch of what she may have looked like when she was around 6 years old and also 12 years old and they were hoping that maybe someone would see these pictures and recognize her maybe an old school teacher of hers would remember an old student that resembled the sketches and they would come forward they created various different sketches some with different physical features such as different hairstyles just hoping that someone would recognize something about this woman but any leads that they did receive from members of the public ultimately just resulted in dead ends. However, although they still didn't have her name, they did discover a few more things about Jane Doe when her body was examined a second time. Things that they initially did not pick up on in the first autopsy conducted in 1971. A forensic anthropologist named William Maples discovered that she had had orthopaedic surgery just a couple of years before her death, probably sometime between 1967 and 1970. And she had this surgery to correct instability in her right ankle. It was also determined that she had periostitis in her lower right leg which is a medical condition caused by inflammation around the tissue near a bone and this would have been causing her some pain so she likely would have walked with a limp before she was killed. William Maples also came to the conclusion that Jane Doe had given birth at least once possibly twice in her lifetime so if they survived she had two children out there somewhere, two children that may still be alive today. Eventually, Sheriff Jamie Adams hired a private investigator to assist in this murder investigation. And after looking into this case, the private investigator uncovered a potential suspect. Now, I couldn't find the name of this potential suspect. I don't believe that information was ever released but apparently just a couple of weeks before Jane Doe's body was found this man was arrested in an area not far from where the woman's body was discovered and the reason that this man was arrested was because one night he was nearly run over by a sheriff's patrol car and at the time he had a pistol in his possession. So this man was arrested for this and the private investigator believed that he may have been responsible for the murder of Little Miss Lake Panasofsky since we know he was near the area where the body was found just weeks before it was discovered. However, according to sources, this man was never really a suspect in police's eyes 
case and he wasn't actually ever questioned or charged in relation to this murder so he may have been involved or he may not have been. There really isn't much information online about that particular suspect. Unfortunately, once again, when this case was reopened in 1986, all leads were pretty much exhausted and this case just went cold. That was until the year 2012, more than 40 years after Jane Doe's murder, when her body was exhumed again. Once again, they examined her remains and this time they determined that she was of European descent, having previously theorised that she was of Indian descent. However, after analysing her hair, they determined that she had been in the US from somewhere between two months and a year before she passed away. So she was originally from Europe, but she had been in the States for somewhere between two months and a year. Upon further examination of her remains, they also discovered that her teeth carried traits that were distinct to people from Lavrion, which is a town in Athens in Greece. Greece, suggesting that this was where she was from. She grew up in Greece. But then how did she end up in the States? Well, one theory the investigators came up with was that perhaps this woman had travelled to the US to attend Epiphany, which is a Greek Orthodox celebration. And every year, many, many people would travel to the city of Tarpon Springs in Florida to celebrate the occasion with the Greek community there. So maybe this was why Jane Doe was in Florida. Maybe she travelled there to celebrate this Greek Orthodox celebration and while she was there she was murdered. The same year that this inquiry was reopened, 2012, the investigators received a possible lead in this case when a woman announced on a Greek crime show that she believed that Little Miss Lake Panasofsky Jane Doe could have been a girl that she knew from her childhood. She said that Jane Doe's reconstruction images really resembled a girl that she knew called Constantina and that she and Constantina attended the same prep school in Greece. According to this woman, after graduation, she and Constantina took part in a student exchange programme in which they were required to work and study abroad for two years. She said that she was sent to Australia for her student exchange and that Constantina was sent to the US in 1970 and that eventually the two of them just lost contact with each other. In fact, she claimed that she and Constantina stopped speaking in 1971 around the same time that the Little Miss Lake Panasofsky would have been murdered. So authorities began looking into this woman's story because it seemed like a potential promising lead. However, according to sources, they were unsuccessful in tracking down any relatives that this Constantina may have had. And so unfortunately, they were unable to determine whether or not this story was true, whether or not this Constantina really is Little Miss Lake Panasofsky. Despite the fact that this case has been reopened and thoroughly investigated, the detectives still appear to be no closer to identifying who Jane Doe was and who killed her. Was she murdered by a random stranger? Or was this crime committed by someone that she knew? And what was the motive for this crime? Why did this poor young woman have to die that day in 1971. As I said at the start of this video, this February will mark the 50th anniversary of this woman's body being found, which is why I wanted to cover this case because 50 years is just too long. I'm really hoping that one day soon Jane Doe will be reunited with her name and her killer, if they're still alive, will be brought to justice. As always with my unsolved cases, I will leave some contact details in the description box of this video in case anyone watching this has any information regarding Little Miss Lake Panasofsky. And yeah, that is it for this video. As always, please do 
let me know your thoughts and opinions on the case in the comments. Do you believe the Constantina theory? Do you think that Little Miss Lake Panasofsky really is this Constantina woman from Greece? Let me know in the comments. Also, please let me know of any other doe cases that you would like to see me cover. I'm going to try and do one doe case every single month because there are just so many out there that need talking about. Before I go, I do just want to say a huge thank you to the members of my Patreon page. Thank you so, so, so much for your support, guys. If anyone else wants to become a member of our little Patreon family, then the link is always in the description box of my video videos please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you again next week for another mystery with molly bye guys